let's algorithm maybe i'll not going to cover all about euclid's algorithm but i'm definitely going to cover the basics of it so what is this algorithm do uh it this algorithm is used to compute the greatest common divisor of two numbers so let's see the algorithm in action let's say we have to compute the gcd of 27 and 12 uh if you recall from your fourth grade math class that you will take the smaller number as divisor and the larger as dividend you ignore the quotient whatever it can be and you will take care of the remainder so it is 3 and the previous divisor will become our dividend this time 12 we'll continue this process when the remainder becomes 0 so if the remainder becomes 0 the previous remainder is our answer uh let's take some bigger example so suppose we have to compute the gcd of 21 and 13 so same smaller as divisor larger as dividend we ignore the quotient so it is 13 this is 8 13 8 5 6 7 8 Five, three, five, three, two, three, two, one, two, two, and then zero. So remainder becomes zero. The so the previous remainder is our answer. So our answer is one in this case. This is very long. Uh, one thing to uh, notice is that 21 13 8 5 3 2 1 0 these, uh, these all are the sequence of a fibonacci number so two consecutive fibonacci numbers is the worst case for euclid's algorithm i will discuss that later uh, but first let's jump to the implementation part So this is the code it is written in C++ this code also works for C and most probably it will also work for Java So uh what I am doing here so I am doing exactly what I had discussed before let let's take the same example suppose we have to calculate the GCD of 27 and 12 So A is 27 B is 12 so this B is not 0 so this is equal to the GCD of b that is 12 27 modulo 12 that is 3 which is equal to gcd of 3 and 12 modulo 3 that is 0 as soon as we hit 0 we will going to return 3 so it will going to return 3 so the gcd of all these numbers are 3 yeah this is exactly what we had uh, discussed the method before uh now this is it and let's see the proof of this method why this method is correct so this is the implementation let's go to the proof to prove that this algorithm is correct we uh we have to prove two things number one is this algorithm should terminate uh number two is that gcd of ab is equal to the gcd of b a modulo b if we can prove these two things then this algorithm is correct so for the termination part i will uh, prove uh, that it will terminate when i will be discussing about the time complexity of this algorithm so it will be proved later but for this part i can prove it right now to prove uh, this thing uh, so we will divide this into two parts first we will going to prove that gcd of ab divides gcd of b comma a modulo b and the second is gcd of 
B comma A modulo B divides this D of A B. If we can, if we can prove these two, then it means that G C D of A B equal to G C D of B A, A modulo B. Why? Because if A divides B and B divides C, B divides A, then both number are equal. So let's prove the first part, and similarly you can also prove the second part. So uh, how do we prove? Let's say G C D of A B is G. So G should divide a and G should divide B. Now, if we can prove that G also divides A modulo B, then then this is true, right? If we can prove that G divides A modulo B, then G is not G C D of A A B. Then it should divide G C G C D of B A modulo B. So. Let's write a modulo b. A modulo b is equal to a minus a by b. This is the floor function into b. Now, this this one is the quotient. This a modulo b is remainder is equal to uh, dividend minus cosine cosine times divisor. So this is true. Mm. Now, as you can see, G divides A and G divides B. Then G also divides any linear combination of A and B. That means G also divide. This implies G also divides A modulo B because A modulo B is a linear combination of A B, A and B. So we have proved the A part. And similarly, you can also prove the B part by just shifting this one, uh, this one to the left, this one to the left, and by rearranging, you can prove that. Uh, starting from this, you can prove that uh, this divides this one. So both of these are equal. So this is the proof. Uh, to analyze the time complexity, uh, I'm going to make a small assumption that A is always greater than B. Uh, let's see uh, what happens if A is smaller than B. Suppose A is 12 and B is say 27. What will going to happen? We are we will going to return the GCD of B. That is the GCD of 27 and a modulo b that is 12 means if initial input a is smaller than b then after first iteration it will going to get bigger than b because uh, we are returning the gcd of b and a modulo b a modulo b will uh, will only going to take values from 0 to b minus 1 so even if uh, initially a is not uh, a is smaller than b after just one recursive call, it will going to get bigger than B. So I am assuming that A is uh, greater than B. Now what? Uh, now let's try to prove that half into A into B is greater than B into A modulo B. Uh, as you can see, what I'm trying to do is we, I'm trying to do that every time uh, this uh, new uh, new the new product of those two pairs A and B will going to decrement more than half of it if we somehow prove this. So let's prove this first. After that, we will see what is the time complexity. So we can cancel out B simple. So we have to prove that A is greater than two times A modulo B. This is hard, not really. Uh, we will divide again uh, 
b into two cases the first one is uh, b is smaller than equal to half of a if b is smaller than equal to half of a that means a modulo b will going to be smaller than equal to half of a minus 1 uh, means a modulo b uh, will only going to take values from 0 to b minus 1 but b itself is smaller than a smaller than equal to a so a modulo b will always going to be smaller than two time uh, half of a uh, so this is the first case the second case is uh, say b is greater than half of a so if b is greater than half of a what does it mean it means a modulo b is simply uh, going to become a minus b why because th this quotient a by b will uh, always going to be uh, one so if b is greater than half of a then a minus b will always going to be smaller than half of a so we have proved these two mm, that means for all these two cases a is greater than two times uh, a modulo b assuming that a is greater than b of course so we have proved the time complexity so what will be the time complexity every time the product is decreasing by two so the time complexity is o of log lg means log base 2 a into b so this is it uh, so that's it for this video and thanks for watching bye